Lesson six, convincing your teammates. One of the hardest things to do in life is handle success. Whether it involves you getting your first double-double or dropping 30, going from nothing to something can be challenging. There are two names that you will hear after you start to excel consistently at scoring the basketball. Ball hog or scorer. Though they are one and the same, their perceptions can make or break your career. The ball hog is a guy who over dribbles, never passes the ball, and always seems to want to shoot every time he touches the ball. There is no problem with wanting to score. Hey, if you don't score, you don't win. But there is a way you have to do it. You see, everyone hates a ball hog. The ball goes to this guy, and one thing is certain, it's not coming back out. The major issue that I have with ball hog tag is that no one wants to play with you. Yeah, a lot of guys feel that they don't need their teammates, but I beg to differ. If you can convince your teammates and coach that you're a scorer, this will make your life a whole lot easier. A scorer is someone who has a knack for being around the ball and putting the ball in the basket. Whether it's a post player down low who scores with post moves and putbacks or a guard who scores from the outside shots, a scorer gets the job done. Notice I use the word convince when I talk about the difference between a ball hog and a score. The bottom line is they both put up a ton of shots, but they had different perceptions. If you want to shake the ball hog stigma, you have to master your shot selection. The reason many players are called ball hogs is because they take terrible shots. Even if it goes in, the average observer is going to look at your success as a selfish act. This is where studying the game comes into play. As a player, the first thing I would do is study the coach's system. Unlike pickleball, every coach has an idealistic way of running a team. He has plays that he swears will work in any situation, and it's up to you to find a way to score with them. What I found is that no matter what system I play in, if you know how to get open, no one can play even though you end up taking a majority of the shots. I recall running the flex, which is a universal basketball offense of screens and cuts. Since I was more skilled at using screens and back cuts than some of my teammates, I would always end up taking the shot. When I was having an off day, my coach would say, God, I went and passed the ball. And my reply would always be the irrefutable, but I was open. As a coach, this sometimes comes back to haunt me. When I yell at a kid who just missed the last two shots and he turns around and says he's wide open, I can't help but to chuckle, knowing that unless I tell a kid not to shoot the ball, he's right. If you want to evade the ball hog scholar letter, there are some golden rules you have to follow. Coach Godwin tips for lesson number six, convincing your teammates. Never put your head down looking like you want to score the ball. As a scorer, you have to make sure your body language keeps everyone off guard, including the defender and your teammates. Be a willing passer, especially in practice. Take practice as a time to develop team chemistry and trust your teammates. The coach wants to run every play through, so use this as an opportunity to shed that tag. Learn how to come off screens. Learning how to come off screens made me a consistent threat. Every coach expects you to shoot when your man is caught up in a screen. Learn how to set screens. The quickest way to get open is setting a screen. When two people are confused about whom they're guarding, someone is always wide open. Be quick but not in a rush. Nothing looks better than a guy who is under control and takes great shots.